People often think that if you spend more, you're going to get more for your money. But when it comes to investing, that might just not be the case. Today, we're gonna be talking about the difference between active and passive investing in funds. So the general misconception may be that active funds may be better for your portfolio. You have someone managing it, picking and choosing particular investments, but most of the time, passive funds actually well outperform active funds. It's really important to understand why that is. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Before we go any further, I just wanna be clear. I am not a financial advisor and this is not personalized investment advice. So let's start with active funds. When you're investing in an active fund, you're essentially paying a fund manager who's in charge of picking and choosing the individual investments that go into that fund. Now, the problem with this is that people are notoriously bad at predicting the market. So a lot of times these fund managers are actually losing you money, even though you're paying them more for their service. According to Spiva, which is part of S&P Global, in the past year, just under 42% of actively managed large cap U.S. funds beat the market. In the last 10 years, that figure is only about 17.5%. Active funds are funds that use an active management strategy. This means that there's a person who is picking and choosing individual securities such as stocks that go into the mutual fund, and this is what you're investing in, but by the choice of the fund manager. For that person's work, you actually have to pay them a management fee. And this is expressed as an expense ratio. Now, this is a fee that's expressed as a percentage of your assets under management. Assets under management is simply the amount of money that you have in a particular fund or that is being managed for you by a financial advisor. And with active funds, the expense ratio tends to be quite a bit higher because you're paying for the service of the fund manager to manage these funds. So the expense ratio is a fee that you'll pay every year, no matter how your fund performs. So you even if your fund manager picked some real duds, you're still gonna be paying the same amount of money. Active funds typically range in cost from 0.5 to 1% of your assets under management. So if you have $100 under management and your expense ratio is 1%, then you'll pay $1 every year as your expense ratio. But as that amount of money that you have grows, potentially, hopefully over time, then the amount that you'll pay will increase as well because it's a percentage. So if your money increases from $100 to $1,000, then while the percentage of what you're paying stays the same, you'll be paying more. The problem with this model is that people are notoriously bad at trying to predict the future, mostly because the future is just unpredictable. So when there's unforeseen events like global politics or wars or, COVID-19, it's really difficult to know exactly what's going to happen and which companies will perform well and which ones won't. So in an active fund, a manager is picking and choosing these stocks for you. It's not that you are picking and choosing individual stocks, and that's important to keep in mind. And while a fund manager may perform better than the everyday investor, they're still very likely to underperform market benchmarks. And that means that you're paying someone to actually underperform the market. So you're paying more and you're getting less over the long term. And the reason you're paying more is because you're having to pay someone to manage this fund for you. No matter how they perform, no matter how much money they make you or how little money they make you, you still have to pay them a fee that's typically higher than other funds that you could invest in. A NerdWallet study found that 1% in fees could cost a millennial more than $590,000 in returns over 40 years. So when we talk about the pros and cons of active funds, eh, the pros, there's not too many. But the cons, they typically cost more and they tend to underperform. In a Morningstar study, only 26% of all active funds topped the average of their passive rivals over the last 10 years. So let's talk about passive funds. Passive funds are pretty much the opposite of active funds, where instead of paying a fund manager, a passive fund will track an existing index such as the S&P 500. So this means that every single stock that's on the S&P 500 will likely be reflected in your passive funds. And then however the index overall performs, that's about how well your fund will perform as well. So rather than trying to beat the market the way that active funds do, passive funds just try to match the performance and they typically get pretty close. There are two types of mutual funds popular for passive investing. The first is index funds, which are made up of stocks or bonds that are listed on a particular index. So the risk aims to mirror the risk of that index as do the returns. If you own an S&P 500 index fund and you hear that the S&P 500 was up 3% for the day, that means your index fund should also be up 3%. The second is exchange traded funds. And these can be traded like individual stocks, but they offer the diversification benefits of mutual funds. In many cases, ETFs will have a lower minimum 
investment than index funds. Even though passive funds don't have a fund manager, you still have to pay a management fee. So these expense ratios tend to range from 0.1 to 0.2%, but you can even find funds that have a 0% expense ratio. That means that you have to pay nothing for the privilege of having your money in this fund. So one potential reason why passive funds end up making more money than active funds is because they're tracking a set number of companies and no one is trying to predict the market and establish that they're going to put a bunch of money into a certain company and say that it will do well. That creates a lot of risk and the possibility of losing a lot of money. Whereas if you're just tracking a set number of companies, like you're tracking in an index, the likelihood that your money will grow over time increases. So essentially, passive funds are more likely to make you more money over the long term because they're matching the returns of these indexes instead of falling short of them. So if you're looking for a passive fund, they'll typically cost less because you won't have to be paying someone to manage it and they may perform better than active funds. Passive funds are really great for most investors, but particularly those who are looking for long-term investments, like if you're saving for retirement. So fund managers may market themselves as being able to beat the market and get you better returns and make you way more money than passive funds. But historically speaking, and especially over the long term, that just doesn't turn out to be true. Whether you're investing in active funds or passive funds or even other types of investments, the most important thing is to just start investing. Because the longer time frame your money is in these investments, the longer you have to capitalize on compound interest. I'm Alana Benson, an investing writer for NerdWallet.com. If you want to learn more and watch as we compare other financial products, stay tuned and keep watching.